Hello, church. This is Keith Fair, pastor for Faith Formation and Discipleship at St. Matthew Lutheran Church in York, Pennsylvania. We are part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and this is the Preaching Points video for the upcoming second Sunday of Advent, December 6th, 2020. Our passage of scripture for this week is from the Gospel of Mark, uh, the very first eight verses, chapter one, verses one through eight. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were crossing and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is coming, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So this Sunday is again a day of beginning amongst a season of beginnings. Uh, it is the second Sunday of Advent, but Advent's a short season. And as Pastor Shively announced last week, Advent is the beginning of the church's year. We're also not far from the conclusion of 2020 and the beginning of 2021 with the new year in January. And in this time of COVID, I suspect we are longing for new beginnings, a time when there will be a lifting of the restrictions and limitations that we're living under right now. I'm sure that when there is a vaccine and the pandemic eventually comes under control and then finally comes to an end, as it will inevitably, even if it doesn't feel like it today, it will end. And I'm sure that when that happens, there will be a collective feeling of new beginning and rebirth for every person on this planet. We're reading this week from the beginning of Mark's gospel, which Mark says is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark's is not the oldest gospel written in the New Testament. Uh, excuse me, Mark's is not the oldest writing in the New Testament, but it is the first of the four Gospels, which means that it is the first intentionally crafted piece of scripture in the New Testament. After all, Paul, he just thought he was writing letters. And even though Mark doesn't call attention to Jesus's birth the way Matthew and Luke do, or, or his origins at creation the way John does, Mark calls attention to how Jesus is a restart, again, a new beginning for God's ongoing work in and through Israel, starting with the herald figure of John the Baptist. You know, I often sort of envision John the Baptist as, as a powerless outsider, as, as a bit of a weirdo, someone that his contemporaries make fun of, but that isn't really true, is it? Crowds of people follow John. They leave their homes in Jerusalem and, and in the Judean countryside, and they come to be baptized by him in the Jordan River, and they listen to his calls to rebirth and repentance, uh, his proclamation about the coming Messiah. They, they stay and they listen to him. We see evidence of John's power in the fear of religious and political leaders of the time. And John uses his influence over people to point them toward Jesus and, and to greatly sway public opinion about this other seemingly powerless nobody who is actually the Son of God, who has come to bring peace and hope and reconciliation to the world's peoples. You know, it'll be interesting to see where John calls us to go together in this season of new beginnings, in this life of discipleship. 
And as we move deeper into the Advent season, we'll continue to spend time in the wilderness where God's power is most often deeply, uh, viscerally experienced. In the wilderness, we are laid bare. We're softened up for the work that the Spirit has in mind for us. So that as Christmas approaches, we can be made ready for the birth of the Savior. I'm glad that we're on that journey together. And I look forward to seeing you again. Until then, be safe and God bless.